Alcohol in skincare is one of the most controversial ingredients. There are different opinions from different people that know what they're talking about. Like, who should I believe? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite esthetician here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Amaka, and today we're talking about alcohol and skincare. Mm. Alcohol in skincare is one of the most controversial ingredients. There are different opinions from different people that know what they're talking about. Like usually, when there's a controversy around any ingredient, I go to specific people's pages and listen to what they have to say about that ingredient. And most times I tilt towards their opinion. But alcohol, this alcohol matter here is very different too because different people that are who is who in skincare have different opinions. Like when I went to Dr. Dre's channel, she had something to say. And when I went to Dr. B's channel, she had very opposite and contrary opinion to Dr. Dre. So I was like, who should I believe? Anyway, I went to do my research myself, you know, watched every channel touched on every single issue that has been raised and you know came up with my own conclusion and that's why i'll make this um, series a two-part series um at the end of the series you understand why but yeah i'll make it i'll make it a two-part series and this is the first part so what is alcohol so in chemistry for something to be classified as an alcohol it should have a molecule attached to a hydroxyl group essentially a hydrogen and oxygen group or oh group and um, there are different types of alcohol. You have retinol, glycerin, polyhydric alcohol, fatty alcohol, but low molecular weight alcohols. That's your alcohol denatured, as propyl alcohol. There are different types of alcohol. So you cannot, you can't just eradicate alcohol in skincare. However, when people talk about alcohol in skincare, they're talking about two major types of alcohol: the good and the bad. Now, when they hear and get good alcohol, they are referring to things like your polyhydric alcohol, so your humectant, so your um, propylene glycol, your butylene glycol, your sorbitol, all those um, humectant alcohols, and your higher molecular weight alcohol, so your fatty alcohols like your cetyl alcohols alcohol sterile alcohol and your cetyl alcohol also when you get bad alcohol you're talking about simple alcohols or lower molecular weight alcohol such as your alcohol denatured alcohol denate as a proper alcohol and ethanol so most times when you're alcohol in skincare they're referring to either of these two categories and i'll be addressing them you know independently of each other so even though all these are alcohols your experience using them their function in your product and the way they interact with other ingredients in the product as in are very 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 different it all depends on the type of alcohol and the size of the molecular weight of that alcohol so let's start with fatty alcohols or what's known as your good alcohols so your polyhydric alcohols are humectants and are usually derived from sugars so that's your butylene glycol propylene, propylene glycol sorbitol glycerin and you know the like and your fatty alcohols are usually derived from fatty acids from plant sources so you have your palm oils and coconut oils um usually at room temperature they are usually very solid thick and waxy the products they function as emollient so they you know soften the skin and ensure that the conicides are well flattened out they prevent trans epidermal water loss so they can you know protect the skin from losing water they are texture enhancers so they thicken product they give products this thick and waxy feel as i explained to you they're usually thick solid and waxy in consistency they are humectants so they help you attract water in fact they are phenomenal moisturizing ingredients they are good for your skin barrier the whole shebang like if you watch my video on um, your skin barrier you understand what i'm trying to say so they do everything like there's you no know, occlusion um, um attracting water and you know softening that's what your fatty alcohols do now your lower molecular weight alcohols or your you know simple alcohols such as your denatured alcohol ethanol aka the bad alcohols are very different very different so as opposed to the fatty alcohols that are you know thick and waxy in consistency at room temperature denatured alcohol are you know liquid and very volatile meaning that they evaporate very easily also as opposed to your 
party alcohols, they give a product a thinner feel and a more matte feel. So products that contain simple alcohol are usually lightweight and less greasy. They also are solvents. So what that means is that they help dissolve ingredients that ordinarily would may not be able to dissolve in a particular formula. For example, you see them in a lot of sunscreens and they are there to number one make the sunscreen feel lighter, then most importantly to dissolve some of those sun um active sunscreen ingredients and keep them stable in a cream vehicle. They also, um, in older toners, you, can, you will see products that have salicylic acid um, always had ethanol or denatured alcohol to enable salicylic acid to dissolve in an aqueous solution because toners are largely water-based and salicylic acid is oil um, soluble, so it doesn't particularly dissolve well in toners. So putting alcohol there will enable it to dissolve properly. However, there are some um, good alcohols that are also used as solvents, for example, Propylene glycol and butylene glycol in recent toners are used in place of alcohol because they can actually dissolve salicylic acid. So they are also in there are some um, good alcohols that can also be used as solvents. So alcohols are also used to extract ingredients from ingredients from plants. For example, witch hazel. That's why some people are against witch hazel because some in some distillation processes they use alcohols to extract the witch hazel out of you know the plant. Also, alcohols are penetration enhancers, so they enable you know active ingredients in a particular product penetrate the skin a lot better. On that note, there are also some good alcohols that are also penetration enhancers, aka butylene glycol and propylene glycol. They are also penetration enhancers. I forgot to mention them when I was talking about the good alcohols. So you see, simple alcohols are almost the exact opposite of your higher molecular weight alcohols. Simple alcohols are you know very volatile, they evaporate easily and are liquid, whereas your higher molecular weight alcohols are thick, waxy and solid at room temperature. Your um, simple alcohols make products very light and, you know, less greasy and have a matte finish, whereas your higher molecular weight alcohols give a thick and lubricious feel, that thick and, you know, moisturizing feel. People that have oily skin and live in very, you know, humid and hot regions will tilt towards like products that have your lower molecular weight alcohol, whereas people that have drier skin and live in maybe cooler or, you know, just harsher, you know, climates will tilt towards products that have like a lot of higher molecular weight alcohols. So now we understand their function, let's talk about their side effect. Let's start with the lower molecular weight alcohol, so your denatured alcohols, your isopropyl alcohols, your ethanol and the like. Now the first thing is, as I explained, it is very volatile, so it evaporates easily. Now the downside to that is that because it evaporates easily, sometimes while evaporating, it takes water out of your skin as well. The same thing with water, when you use water on your skin and you don't top it up with a moisturizer or a humectant, as it's evaporating, it takes water from your skin and that is called trans epidermal water loss. 12 T-E-W-L and that can leave your skin dry and sensitive and sensitive to other products that are put on your skin subsequently after it so essentially it could lead to dehydration and sensitivity also you know that we said that it's a penetration enhancer so essentially it you know enhances penetration of active ingredients that were put in the product that it is in now while that is a good thing i mean we want we all want our active ingredients to penetrate very well now the only problem with that is a lot of times in a formulation there is more than the, there's more than just active ingredient there there are other things there that could be very sensitizing for example fragrance essential oils oils etc so why it is you know enabling your active ingredients to penetrate your skin is likewise enabling other things that should not penetrate your skin penetrate you, you know that you cannot you cannot pick and choose you cannot say wait statistic as it enter you fragrance go back go back go back you cannot do that kind of thing now it's just open your skin barrier for everything to enter so good bad and ugly and that can be a problem so these are the two major downsides to low molecular weight alcohol one it can cause dryness and dehydration two it can and that can increase your sensitivity to just different things then two it can you know enable um, things to just penetrate your skin that ordinarily should be left outside your skin. Now for fatty alcohols, let's talk about their side effects. Now the first thing is, too much of everything is bad. Now when the, when the product is not permitted properly and they use too much of fatty alcohols, that can be a problem. For example, a lot of fatty alcohols are derived from plant sources. And a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people are allergic to 
or get irritated or develop sensitivity to anything plants. Now, if that is the case, um, using these alcohols at a very high concentration or in combination with certain ingredients can lead to sensitivity in certain people. Also, fatty alcohols like cetyl alcohol, which is a very oily fatty alcohol, has been seen to cause breakouts in some people. Likewise, um, polyhydric alcohols like propylene glycol, butylene glycol can also cause sensitivity in some people's skin. I think, I honestly think I develop sensitivity to products that have propylene glycol and salicylic acid together, but I'm still observing my skin, but I've observed that like, two or three products that I've tried with this combination did not just sit right in my skin. So yeah, people can develop sensitivity to your good alcohol so as you can see they both you know have their goals and functions in skincare and both of them also have potential side effects so if you're asking so which one should you use which one should you avoid blah 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 the answer is not straightforward um it all depends on your skin type your skin concerns the formulation of the product what is in your routine and just how that product sits with your skin let me explain very briefly. For example, if you have oily skin, you know that you and you live in a you know hot and humid environment, you may appreciate products that have denatured alcohol more than products that are rich with fatty alcohols. If you have dry, dehydrated, compromised skin, eczema prone skin, you may want products that are really fatty and you know just filled with them fatty and hydrating alcohols. Also, your skin routine plays an important part. Now, you may have them say dry skin or have a lot of hydrating and you know moisturizing things in your routine to be able to tolerate one product that have denatured alcohol so let me say your sunscreen has simple alcohol but then you have a hydrating cleanser you have a hydrating serum you use a very rich and fatty moisturizer before your sunscreen then possibly you may be able to tolerate a sunscreen with simple alcohol so you see your routine plays like a very like very important role another thing again is the formulation of the product which is very very important you cannot see eh, the ingredient list will tell you what is in the product but will not tell you anything jack shit about how the product was actually formulated and cooked together now i say that because um sometimes you see a product that has denatured alcohol and used on your skin i find that it's very very drying you see another one with the same ingredient and find out that <laughs> It's even moisturizing so it depends on how the product was formulated you, there are certain things you look out for from the ingredients list though look out where humectants where humectant put in the product where do they have oils in the product emollients in the product because if the major issue is that um it could cause dryness and dehydration putting moisturizing ingredients will help counteract that these are things you should look out for then another thing is just your skin type and agree with the product this is another thing again that you cannot find from the ingredient list. Some ingredient list you, you look at and you look like, ah, this will be very drying. But when you try it on your skin, you find out that for some reason it's not. And there's some products that, you know, seem to be able to work for your skin, like from the ingredient list perspective, and you try it on and it doesn't work for your skin. Let me give an example. When you look at the ingredient list of, um, of CeraVe moisturizing cream, yes, you would think that an oily skin person will not be able to tolerate it. Like, it's even within their self, dry skin. I've seen a lot of people with oily skin being able to tolerate terrible moisturizing cream. So, at the end of the day, you need to try your product at first, know whether or not you would, you know, tolerate it. And so, this brings us to the end of part one. Um, ordinarily, this is supposed to be like a happy ending. Every is a win win situation. Everybody's happy. Um, fatty alcohol, natural alcohol, we are all happy. We have ways of working around each other. Yeah, um, this should have been a good ending. However, there's more. There have been outrageous claims that have been made against simple alcohols in skincare that I feel that if not addressed and addressed properly would be an incomplete video. I mean, claims that can literally be detrimental to your life. <laughs> okay, that's me exaggerating, shall But anyway, in part two, we'll be addressing these claims be addressing how these claims were you know were made or whether how these findings were made and whether or not it should be a thing of concern so watch out for part two as usual it will take time to come out like i'm shooting it right now it's just that i'll upload it on you know a day after i upload this one anyway thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to share like subscribe and i'll catch you in my next video bye
too. God, I'm so tired. Man. I changed my shirt. Why am I changing my shirt? They already know his part two is coming now. And they know I sh I'm shooting on the same day. Why am I changing my shirt? Okay. Is this recording? <laughs> Let me stop my recording. Okay.